Hello, everybody. I wanted to do a quick video showing you how a fully online, what is known as DLON course works at Hillsborough Community College. With this, I'm going to take you through the syllabus, show you where your online materials are. And then, of course, at the end of the syllabus, your tentative schedule, which again gives you sort of like the pacing of how this course works. Please be aware that a fully online course like this, these DLON courses, are designed to be student paced. There's no live lectures, there's no live meetings, nothing like that. It's solely on your own. With me sort of in the background, having the materials up, setting up the exams, facilitating the exams, and then of course asking questions when you have them. So I'm gonna show you how that all works. As I put this into my share screen, I'm gonna go down to the bottom. So you may not be able to see much of me, focus in on what I have on the screen. It's gonna be, Again, all your course materials. Once I'm done with this, I do have an announcement already on Canvas for you. Read through that announcement where it's explaining again pretty much what I'm going to say in this video. And then always feel free to either send me an email or schedule a Microsoft Teams appointment, which will allow you to have a real time conversation with me. So I like this. Uh, I can see you, you can see me, you can ask questions, um, I can answer them real time. That works much better than email. So I can see how you're responding to it. Um, you don't have to send like five different emails trying to, to get an idea across in this very impersonal medium that emails are. So let's go through that. And then I will reiterate this at the end. So let me change my view for you. Okay, so now you should be seeing our main course page at HTC. Hopefully you've seen this before, you've worked through it. You have a little bit of understanding what Canvas is. But I'll give you a quick idea. So you go to this for logging into Canvas, you would go down to resources for, and then of course for me, it's faculty and staff. Once you get into the resources for, you get something like this, click on Canvas, and in Canvas, you can go to the class page. Now, this is obviously my view. This is the faculty view. It might be a little bit different than your view, and that is all right, no worries, but it gives you the main idea of what you're going to be doing. So obviously general information of the course, same here. And then how to get started. If you're new to Canvas, I'd recommend you watch these videos. The links are working fine. They've been tested. And it kind of runs you through again what Canvas is about and how to navigate through it. A little bit like what I'm going to show you as well. And then I've given you some information on how to, again, kind of approach the class. Now, this is more of a general information. For specific information, take a look over here. These links you're going to use a lot in regards to this course. The homepage is where obviously we are. Announcements are just that. So click on the announcements. As I said, I already have an announcement up for you. It's a long announcement. And that had to be done because I'm not there with you. If this was a face-to-face -face class, a traditional course, or if it was a, what's called a D Live C class, that would mean it's online, yes, but we have scheduled live meetings. So I'm sitting here lecturing away, doing everything I normally do in the class, all the material, all the videos, every silly joke I can think of, whatever maybe. It's the same deal as what you would get in a traditional course at the Adele Mayberry campus, for example, just you're wherever you are and I'm wherever I am doing that live lecture. This is not that, of course. This is fully on your own, at your own pace. And I'm kind of explaining what I would have done in the orientation of that course, which is really what this is as well, but you now have it in two places. So make sure you read through this. And just like I'm noting with the syllabus, read it carefully and thoroughly. I did make note that the syllabus is a bit long. I'm gonna show it to you here. It's not as long as the DLive C, um, and that's because there's certain things in there you do not need in this class, but it's long by student request. When COVID-19 happened, a lot of us had never taught online before. We are traditional professors, we were in class, that kind of idea. So we kind of got vaulted into this online teaching with virtually no background for a lot of us. So we were racing to keep up. And I took my traditional syllabus and I used it in my classes never had a problem with that syllabus and all the years i've been using variants of it i mean i change it every single semester but it's uh, got kind of a framework that sort of idea but suddenly people have problems with it so i quickly learned in subsequent semesters in the very next one it's got to be much more thorough because again people are at a distance i'm not there with them and that changes the whole dynamics so it became a long syllabus and it was meant to be as thorough and direct as possible so you can see that even in this announcement, that's true with the syllabus as well. And again, you're gonna see that. So read through this carefully. And as always ask questions, if anything comes up, read first, try to get an idea what's going on. And then if you're still not sure, ask me. I mean, don't do something like, 
well, I have no idea what homework is. I'm not going to bother seeing the syllabus. Like, yeah, it might be a section there, but nah, I'll just ask. It's easier, quicker. No, it's not actually, because you're going to ask me a question. I don't know where you really want to go with it. And we kind of got to work it through. And then on top of that, I've got a lot of classes. Uh, every class is a little bit different. So I've got to kind of go back and go through the material and find out exactly what you want for that course. So it's, it's just much quicker if you read through it. Instead of us having to do like five emails back and forth, and we could do it in one or two. So be sure to read it carefully. Now the files, everything you're really going to need in this class outside of like purchasing the textbook and there's a caliper you need to buy, it's right here. So the syllabus, click on that link, there you go. You're going to be able to see this right now. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. Your lectures. Now there's two sections, there's two parts of the course. There's the nutrition part and the drugs and, and tobacco part. So the nutrition is, this is about 90% of the class right here. And so what I did, what most professors do is we get like notes from the publisher. Very thankful to get that. I've had courses where I had to design the notes from scratch. That is a full-time job in itself, let alone everything else you're doing in your full-time job. So this is very common. now. When we get the notes from the publisher, the publishers do a good job, but we have to go through that and find errors. It's not a common to find errors, uh, to take stuff out that's not in the course objectives, to put stuff in that should be there. So what this really is, this is a summary of the chapters. For example, let's take a look at the first chapter. Now I recommend you do what I just did, open it up in a new page. There you go. So I took everything out of the chapter that came from the author and gave you effectively a summary. Now it might seem a bit odd saying, well, 31 slides, a summary, yeah. There's a whole lot more in the chapter than what is here. So I did that to streamline it. So you know exactly what you need to know for your test. If it's in these PowerPoint notes, you need to know for your exam. All of my graded questions come from these PowerPoint notes. Now you might come away saying, well, wait a minute. If that's true, why do I need the book? For several reasons, at least two you need it for. One, my extra credit that I will be having on your exam. That doesn't mean a lot of extra credit, but it will be there. That comes out of the parts of the chapters I do not have the time to talk about. I can't talk about everything. And then second, the homework outside of the labs is found in your textbook. So yeah, you need to buy the book. But this is the summary. This is a whole lot more than what I got from the author. Now, some of these chapters will be more than this, like be 50 or 60 slides. And I've had students say, well, yeah, my gosh, 60 slides in a PowerPoint. That's way more than I've ever seen before. That's, that's not right. Yeah, well, welcome to science first off. There's a lot of information. But it is still a summary, so you have to know this stuff. But it's all here for you, ready to go. Now, there's nothing that says I had to do this. This is a courtesy to you. Technically speaking, in a course like this, you read the book, you do the homework, you ask questions, you take the test. But I'm doing what I can to give you as much as I can to help you through it. Because I want to make sure you understand this. Well, this is a course in nutrition and drugs, yeah. I have students coming and say, oh, it's great. We're going to have a course that's about you know, why apples and oranges are good for you and juice is not so good for you. And why junk food is junk food and why you should be focusing on, on nutrient dense foods. Yes, we're going to talk about all of that. But this is actually a science class and there is a ton of science here. And I've had students before I warn them about this, it, like it, on campus at Elmer, we get to like the middle of the semester and they're just tired, they're grumpy. Oh, I don't want to do this anymore. Why do you have to make it hard? I'm not making it hard. I'm just talking about what's in the book. So they need to understand this is a true and true science class. For example, this is a late start class, but I have a traditional course I'm working with, and we just are moving through the carbohydrates chapter, and it's dealing with sugars, a ton of science there. This isn't just saying, well, your sugar is bad for you. Is it really, though? No. So we're actually going to talk science. Now, as a note, how I lecture, which is what I'm going to try to do for you if I can, I talk about the stuff. I don't sit here, in this case, because I'm, I'm not a dumb every, I'm actually in a chair with actually a fake background, although it's a lovely background. Talking about this, I don't sit here and say, well, why learn about nutrition? Poor eating habits contribute to several leading causes of death. I do not do that. I didn't even know that was a form of pedagogy until somebody pointed out to me, oh, wow, I really like that you talk about this stuff. I've got a professor that doesn't, they just read slides. Any teacher in their class can do whatever they want. This is not meant to be criticism in any way towards anybody. It's their course, they can do what they want. But I don't like that. Maybe I got lucky. When I was a student in undergrad and graduate school, I didn't have teachers that did that. I had teachers that tried to explain it. And so that's what I try to do as well. Now, on that point, why did I even bring it up? Even though this is a DLON class, I would like to put videos up for you. Now, I've never done that. And this is a late start class. I didn't even know I was teaching this course when the semester began. It was like a week or two in before I finally 
had any knowledge this might be happening. So I haven't had almost any time to really prepare for this. And when it was DLON, as opposed to DLIFC or traditional, I thought to myself, well, wait a minute. I taught DLON once. I did it like the college had said to do it. Just put things up, answer questions as they go. Sounds great for me. I mean, put things up, answer questions as they go. But the most common quest I got was, can you please put some videos up? It's really hard just to read this and get it. Yeah, I understand. This is direct information. Right? Take something like this. I just flip to the slide, why not? Metabolism. You've probably been using that word colloquially for, you know, 10, 15, 20 years of your life. You know, long time now. But look at what it means. It's a sum total of all chemical reactions in your body. And even more than that, if I want to be specific, and I am in my lectures, it's actually the sum total of all catabolic and anabolic reactions in your body. What the heck is a catabolic reaction? What the heck is an anabolic reaction? How does it relate to anything like I'm eating an apple? I'm going to talk about the stuff. And so when I do that, I might spend 15 minutes on a slide like this and 30 seconds on this one, because I'm really going to talk about a lot here. I might spend five minutes on one thing before I even get to the next one, like an essential nutrient. I discuss the material. Now, this has nothing to do with HUC. It's a pedagogy issue. It was directed to me that, hey, you really don't want to put videos up. And I probed why people would say that to me. Why? How could there be a downside to them? I never got a good answer. So it's not that I, I'm not allowed to. It was just strongly recommended not to. I would like to try, though. Now, here's the rub. I've never done that before, ever, ever, ever. So I have to teach it to myself on my own. I'm actually racing now to learn how to do, not just videos like this, but how to do editing of videos, how to do, like, i got a book sitting right here, a gigantic book on Premiere Pro, and how to do that Adobe information and software after I make a video to get it ready to then upload. And even then, if I'm doing it like for YouTube, how to get that ready? I'm working on that. On top of everything else in my full-time job, on top of everything else in my family life, life in general, which we all know can be incredibly busy. I'm trying to learn this. And if I can get that to work, try to present things that are professional videos, I will. Now, in this case, I'm just making a video and putting it up. I'm hoping it's working. But I really want to polish that. So what I hope to do is to be able to, to give you a lecture lecture on this, put in videos, put in, again, silly jokes to help you out and anecdotes to help you out, even though it was suggested I don't do that, because I really want you to do on the course. Now, again, I cannot promise I'll do that. I'm going to try my best. And if I can do that, I will let you know, and I'll get them up as I can around the nine other million things I have to do like every day. And hopefully they'll help you with this. But if I can't, I've already put in the announcements how to approach the class. And it talks about things like that files section that I'm currently showing you. So I'll just click the right part of the link. So for example, here, here's what I recommended you do. Start by carefully and thoroughly reading the class syllabus. And I cannot understate that enough. I just got a, a, an email from another student this evening. This actual evening, it's a Sunday. It's Sunday for what it's worth, Sunday night. What time is it? It's 9.03 PM on a Sunday night. Saying, I don't know what to do with the homework. Really? I've got an entire section in your syllabus. One person even asked me, what is the homework? It says right there in the syllabus that in that course they're in, their homework is the assessments at the end of the chapter and their labs. Kind of sounds like your kind of class. It's right there. If they're asking me, I don't know what I have to turn in for homework. It's in the syllabus. It's right there. So they're not reading or care to read. They're just saying, I don't know, so I'll ask. You're an adult. You're a college student. I expect you to, to approach your work at a college as such, an adult and a college student. So read it carefully and thoroughly. Including this, at the end of your syllabus, I have a frequently asked questions. These questions I get over and over and over again. So I'm trying to save both you and me some time by having you read it carefully and thoroughly. And then at the end, of course, take a look at these questions that come up. And then certainly ask me questions. Yeah, I read through the, the homework. I know it says to do this and this, but I don't know what you mean. So for example, I had another student actually today again say, well, I know in the syllabus it says in the homework section to use Microsoft Word. Actually, it doesn't. It's a suggestion. It says you can do something like Microsoft Word. I'll show you that in your syllabus, actually. So I had to write them back saying, well, that was just a suggestion. You don't have to do that. You can do it however you want. Now, I said that to them. They never bothered to reply to me saying, oh, OK, not even a thank you, which is fine. But still, oh, OK, I understand. So I don't know, because it's an online class. I have no idea. So you, you need to read and then be communicative with me. I tend to be a very communicative professor. So let me know what's going on. But, but read first and then ask. Save yourself time, save me time, that kind of idea. Now, as I'm noting here, after you've read your class syllabus, because this is an online class and specifically fully online, no live lectures, it's at your pace, then start reading the chapters. Read your textbook first. 
read it carefully and thoroughly. Then when you're done with that, then go to the post lecture notes, the one I was just showing you, like this is your first chapter, it's right there in the folders, link and canvas. Go back to where that was. If I can find out where I had it, it must be, I must be on this page. Okay. Had the different view. So again, go to the files link. There it is. Click on that and you're right back to those lectures. Let's go back to my announcement. Right. So read the textbook, then read the post it notes, then do the reviews. Now, as I'm noting here, when you do those reviews, the assessments at the end of your chapter, it means you've read your chapter, you read your post-it notes, you asked any questions you had, and then you're gonna do the assessment like a real test. Close your book, close your notes, don't look back, mind you. That's what I mean, don't look back at any information and give yourself only 30 to 45 seconds per question. Do not be in the habit of taking like five minutes a question. You are not gonna get that. As I'm gonna show you in your syllabus, there's usually 50 to 100 questions on a test. You've got an hour and 40 minutes in a class like this. Uh, that's on par with what they get in the face-to-face -face courses and the DLIPC classes, which is why I gave you that. And it's still a lot to move through. So you don't want to, to be in the habit of five minutes of question. You won't finish the test. And then as I note your syllabus, whenever you get something wrong, and you'll know it because there's answers in your book, I'm going to grade you on completeness. But when you get something wrong, then go back and find out why it's wrong. Don't be in the habit of saying, well, for this question, the answer is A. You've learned nothing. Find out why it's the answer. Go back in your book, go back in your notes, ask me. That's what I'm noting here for you. Now, there's no way in this class to go over a test with you. I don't have any sessions. So like I do say in my D Live C class, what I recommend is after you take a test and you get the score back, it'll be on Canvas for you. Make a Microsoft Teams appointment. Again, if you're not sure how to do Teams, I even have a link right there, how to sign up for it. Make a Microsoft Teams appointment for me. We'll sit down and find a time that's amicable to us both. And we can go over the test, question by question. You can ask any questions you like. So it's all here for you, you know, kind of how to approach the class. Start with your textbook, then go here. Now, McGraw Hill Connect is if you want to use the ebook. I do not care if you use the ebook or a physical book. Either one will work. The physical book is, is sold if you can purchase it at the Domain Campus bookstore. But you would click here and you can get linked in. Now you have to buy access first. So you have to buy it through the publisher, buy it through like the Domain bookstore. Then you go into this that link I just showed you, and you can register your book. I've just got it linked to the course. So once you bought the book, you can use that to then use the book. So there's an ebook for you. It's a lovely smart book. And it's exactly what you would have in the physical book. There you go. Every chapter right there in the basics of nutrition. There you go. It's all right there. You can see it's downloading the material. So it's nice that it's actually working here. Not that it doesn't, but you know, it's online. Technical problems pop up. Now on that idea, I am not attached to McGraw Hill. I am not part of technical support anywhere, including HCC. So if you have technical problems, do not direct them to me. I cannot help you. No faculty member can. You've got to go to the publisher and find out what's going on. But there you go, there's your book right here. Now, again, I do not care if you buy the physical book or you buy the ebook. You need one or the other. You do not need both of them. Now, there you go. There's your assessment at the end of the chapters. There you go. So they're there for you, ready to go. And right there's the answer. So I'm not going to grade your homework based on how many you get right or wrong. The point of the assessments, the reason I'm signing it for homework is so that you can learn the information. So when you go to the exam and you take the exam, hopefully get a good grade. So I grade on effort, which means let's say you said the answer is A. Hypothetically, hypothetically, you say, oh, okay, what's the answer? Oh, it's D, gosh darn it. Okay, fine, D is the answer. Why is it the answer? Now you wanna go back in the book in your notes and I recommend you do this at the end after you've answered everything, but go back in your book, go back in your notes and find out why that is the answer. Learn, don't memorize learn or after understanding right and then of course if you go through your book go through not not sure ask me i will help you with anything i possibly can so your ebook is there you got to publish it, uh, purchase it first but once you do so it is there now quizzes will be used for your exams it's grayed out at the moment for you that's why it's here i can see it on my end but you can because there's no test there yet it's not time for testing grades are just that so again grades there obviously there are no grades right now so there's nothing to be concerned about. Now, granted, at that time, you only see you. You won't see the people registering the course. I can see that on my view, but you'll never see that again. But right now, of course, there's no grade, so it doesn't matter that you see people. There you go. And so as you take a test, it'll populate there. Now, be aware, 
if you check your grade like 10 minutes after you take the test, it'll populate there, but that's a raw score. If I have any extra credit on the exam, it takes time to go through that. I've got to go through every student's test, go to every question that was extra credit on every single student's test and change it by hand. I've got hundreds of students. That takes time to do. So it could be you know a week or two later before I finally have that all done. Remember, that's your raw score. Your grade can only improve. Extra credit can only help you, it cannot hurt you, but it takes time to get that in there. And then last but not least on the links you might want to use, there is a connection to the library. You do have a Gordon Rollins class. So if you want to use that, here you go. You would sign in and you would use it. Nice. Okay, so that's the links. Now, with all that in mind, generally navigating Canvas and what's on Canvas for you, let's go back to files and let's go over your syllabus. That really is, I'm gonna leave it up for now. That really is your like lifeline in a class like this. All right, so click on the syllabus. Again, I recommend you open it in a different tab. And there you go. Now I've encoded these things in PDF which means it should open up in any major operating system. All you need to do is use Adobe and, you, and something like that. It should be fine. So I'm gonna go through this step-by-step, step. bear with me. I'm gonna explain everything, but I still recommend you read it carefully and thoroughly and then ask me questions. So obviously the course itself, now I threw in here the DLNL, just notice it's a full online class, no live lectures, what that means. And of course, what you're taking, it is a late start class. So Good or bad, I'll leave that to you. You don't have as much time as a traditional class at 16 weeks, but that's okay. You'll see the scheduling at the end of the semester in our tentative schedule. My office at HCC, my phone number at HCC, and of course my email at HCC. Notice the asterisk there, I am not on campus. COVID-19 is still COVID-19. There's a whole lot of discussion on that, but remember, I am a scientist. I actually read full-blown published scientific journals. So I keep track of what's going on with COVID. I know what the science community is saying, not what any one person is saying, not what any one news source is saying, I go to the sourcing. And based on that, I had asked permission to stay away from this term because I wasn't sure what it's gonna be like, not just with like the Delta variant and now the Mu variant and Lambda variant all out there, but my wife has cancer. So because it is real, because it is serious and technically she has a compromised immune system because she has cancer, I'm trying to be as protective of her as I could. So I have permission from HCC to be away from this term to teach online. So I'm not at HCC, I'm not in my office. Don't come looking for me in my office. You're going to be lonely. Sorry about that. It also means I'm not checking my phone messages. Nothing is routed to me through a phone message. But I do check my email and I check it regularly. Hey, I was mentioning I answered a few emails tonight. It's unusual for me to answer on the weekend because I'm usually off doing family stuff, but there were a few pressing matters I had to attend to. I've got an exam coming up tomorrow. So in that kind of case, yeah, I'm certainly going to answer something if, if I feel it's absolutely necessary. Generally, most faculty members may not answer over the weekend because again, it might surprise you, we've got a life and I do have a family and I am attending to them, obviously but I do check email regularly. And I'll come back to that in a minute. All right, so first off, the course intended outcomes, objectives. Now bear in mind, these are set down by the college. It's not set down by any one professor. Generally a committee comes together, they decide this is what you're going to do. And therefore whoever gets assigned to teach that class, this is what we have to do. It's pretty robust, but we are going to do our best to get through everything. I will get through everything. So make sure to read over this and get any questions, let me know, but it kind of gives an idea of where we're gonna go with that. Now, because it is a bit of a long syllabus, not as long as the DLive C, it's pretty long. And again, that is by student request. I didn't have it nearly this long, it was like five pages as I transitioned from in-class to online. I made it longer than just to, to satisfy what students wanted. I was as thorough as I could be. With that, because I, I wanted students to be able to easily find things, even like even today, I got a question about, well, what about homework? But, you know, there's a, a, an area right there on homework. Just Flip to that part of your syllabus and read. Maybe you don't have to ask the question. Really, the student have to ask the question. It's right there that says it was the assessment and the lab. So it was an unnecessary email, but you know, I answered it and I was polite, of course. And I don't mind answering them, but it really would save us both time if you would just take a second and read here. And that's what this is for, to help you find information. Now notice the very first one, let's just start there. This has nothing to do with me. The college at the beginning of the term asked us to put this in our, our syllabus, so I did. It might seem odd to you, why are you putting this into an online syllabus? Well, it still makes sense. I have no idea where you're doing this. Maybe you're at the Dunbarry campus with something else, another class that isn't D-Live-C or maybe uh, d -Lon. Maybe it's a, a traditional course. Heck, I have students in my D-Live-C that watch the lectures, attend the lectures at campus. Fine, you can do whatever you want, it doesn't matter to me. But because you may be around campus, this is the policy. I didn't change a word here nor was I asked to. They said, just put this in your syllabus. It's exactly what I did. I put this in my syllabus. And so you can see what they're really gonna be doing. 
stay home if you're sick. You're going to be wearing a mask. Sorry, call us policy. Now, yes, there's mask mandate issues. HCC is following state law. So if you have an issue with it, it's following state law. And then of course, hand washing. This one kind of surprised me. A lot of data indicates it should be 70% alcohol or greater, not 60%, but you know, it's what the college said, so I didn't change it as well. So read through this. If you have any questions, direct it to the college. I've got nothing to do with it. Now, required materials. You need the textbook. It's that simple. There it is, the name of the book, its edition, and who wrote it. You can buy it at the Dunmavery Bookstore. You can buy it at the publisher. You might be able to buy it like a place on Amazon. Knock yourself out. I don't care where you buy it. I would prefer you buy it at HC Dunmavery, but you know, it's a free country. And you do need this body fat caliper with tape measure that is also sold at the Dunmavery campus as part of one of the labs. Now, I have nothing to do with the materials. This is what was discerned by the committee that's going to be used in this course. So if you're taking this class, you have to get this stuff. And then my advice for you. Now, I said before coming to class, because I don't know how you're approaching this, I, I still think you should approach it as a class. It's not like a D life C or traditional, but you, know, you are coming to class when you sit down in front of your computer and you do work. If you're in that mind frame, that tends to help out. When I was an undergrad, I, I remember viewing college like my job. It didn't mean I didn't have a job, I did. I, I worked at the college, but I still viewed the classes as my job. It was the mindset I put myself into. And I, I felt that really helped out. So that's why I kind of left it at least phrasing as I have it in my other courses, because I want you to kind of be in that right mind frame. And yeah, it says move quickly. I also left that alone because this is a late start class. It's going to move kind of fast. Now, granted, fast, it's at your pace. But you have, what did I say? Is this, today's the 12th. Yeah, you've got like a one month less to get to the same amount of material as the traditional 16 week classes. So it is still true. And my office hours, like I said, this is a fully online class. I'm not at the Dunmavery campus. So my office hours are also online. And that generally means email. Now, I do it through email. I don't have these live meetings because that could be a little more complicating. If I was at Del Mavery, actually in my office, in office hours, it still kind of works the same way. Student comes in one at a time, they sit down, they can ask me any question they want. And sometimes there are some sensitive questions like on grades. That's private. That's between myself and the student, their grades. It's not an open forum. And so in that case, if more than one wants to come to my office, if one student's already there, that has to be okayed by that student because they're already there. So I kind of run this the same way. It's kind of an individual issue where you could have a moment to ask me questions. Now that's an email. You need to understand then, email protocol in the United States is 24 to 48 hours to get back to somebody, not 28 to 48 minutes. I get that sometimes. I wrote you an hour ago, why haven't you answered me? I've been in class. Well, I wrote you Friday. Well, okay. When did you write me? You know, it was 5 p.m. Friday. I didn't see the email. And I got a family. I'm dealing with them over the weekend. So when I get back to work on Monday, as soon as I have a chance, as long as it's not a holiday or I'm out sick or something like that, I will answer your email. A little bit of tact. I'll come back to emails in a minute. Uh, there's an etiquette in my other syllabus. I'm sorry I meant to take that out. So you don't need to worry about that. And that's more for being in class. I forgot to take that one sentence out, my apologies. Now, Teams, just like in that announcement, also here, I have a link for you to like work with Teams, to understand how Teams work. They call it on Teams making a call. It's not really making a call. You don't have my phone number. I'm not going to give you my cell number. That's inappropriate. So it's really computers talking to each other. I'm online, you're online. The computer will say, hey, this person is here for their meeting. Great. Go into the meeting, you see me. If you want me to see you, that's fine. I don't care either way. And then you can ask me real questions. Maybe I'm just hearing you. Okay, you wanna talk about that? Great, you wanna go over your test? Great. But this is running you through how to do that. So please use it. Now on those email messages, I'm very communicative and I'm really good at getting back to people. 28 to 48 hours is email protocol in the US. It's what I follow, but I'm still really good at getting back to somebody. If you haven't heard from me in 24 to 48 hours, Try again, make that team's appointment because sometimes it never makes it to me. I've got students say, well, you know, I, I wrote you. Did you get it? I checked, nope, I didn't get it, sorry. Now that's often because somebody wrote me outside the college. Even in the .edu, like USF, it didn't make it to me. The server at HCC, the system is a little bit interesting. It has happened though that even within the college, a student sent me a message, I never got it. Sorry about that. So again, let me know. Now, when you email me, Email me through your HCC email. Do not use anything outside of HCC. No .edu's, 
no Yahoo's, no Earthlings, no Gmail's, nothing. The college wants you to use the HawkMet for your HCC system, the HCC email. That's all they want you to use. And email me here at my ACC address. When you do that, please tell me who you are. Take five seconds. I'm Bob Smith in your DLON nutritional drugs class. Thank you. Because you know what? This semester, I've got three people with the exact same name. You'd be surprised how often that happens. The exact same names. Sometimes even the exact same middle initial, Bob P. Smith. So here's what I get, not, not really uncommonly actually. Bob P. Smith, who by the way, in the subject line writes Bob P. Smith, who then asked me, what do we do today? You know, Bob, I've got no idea because I've got three Bob Smiths. I have no idea what class you're in, no idea therefore what you were doing, no way to help you, no idea how I can help you. All I can do then is send a message back to Bob Smith saying, well, Mr. Smith, who are you? And then bear in mind what's now happened. If Mr. Smith replies to me, nine times out of 10, I don't even get a reply to that message I sent. But if Mr. Smith replies to me, it's email number three, where they're finally saying, oh yeah, I'm Bob Smith, in your DLON nutrition drug class, which means in email number four, I'm finally able to answer your initial question. Here's what we did. Here's what you need to do. Here's what the homework is. That's a waste of time for you. It's a waste of time for me. So just take a second and tell me who you are and then ask your question. Again, though, go back over your syllabus. Many times the question being asked is right there. Save yourself time, save me time. Now you are in a lab class. It's a bit unusual, the C. This is a combination and see, lecture lab. So as you'll see in the tentative schedule, and as I showed you real quickly online, you have a section, even a folder then, that have labs. And so we have to do both. We have to deal with lecture. And again, I would say about 90% of it is lecture and then have some labs. It's exactly what my colleagues are doing. I, I queried them before I taught this. I hadn't taught nutrition drugs in a while before I got started to do it this term. It's not a problem. I don't mind at all. It's probably one of the most applicable classes you can take that we have. You know, there's really nothing more important in your daily life than proper diet, proper sleep, and of course, within that exercise as well. So I didn't mind at all, but I, I hadn't done it in a while. We get assigned classes. So I went back and asked me, well, you know, what are you doing for your labs? I got no idea. So I'm, I'm following my colleagues are the perfectly fine labs. We have to do them. And I'm noting right here exactly where you find them. They're in the additional labs folder for whatever you need. So let's go back and look at that. Here's your links right there, files, click on files. And there's that lab. And everything in here is what you need. Now, the additional labs, for example, in exercise one, I might feel I need more stuff. I might feel more instructions necessary. Because if you click on this, your lab's right there. It already tells you what to do. But maybe there's something a little more thorough I want you to be aware of, or I might want to uh, amend something. Because these labs were designed for on campus, not for online. So they have to be reworked a little bit. I'll put up an announcement or if I could ever get it to work out, a video. Now, if it was in my DLive C class, I actually go through the lab with them. I explain all of this to them, what it all means, how the data is working, and therefore what I want them to do. We don't have that luxury because there's no live sessions, but they're all right there in these lab folders. Just go and read, and if you need the supplemental information, I will get it up there for you. And I'll show you in the homework what all this is do. Post of files, I already showed that one to you as well. So again, go back to the files link, click on that, and there they are, all your lectures. This is your posted lectures. And again, I already showed you the nutrition ones. The drugs and tobacco are the same deal. It's all there for you. And then now homework then. Now with the homework, really there's two parts to the homework. A third, if you wish to look at it that way. And the two parts are your practice test at the end of those chapters. And then the lab work. So like the student that actually emailed me today, which I've gotten from a couple other students at the time, not many. I mean, I've got 100 students, only a couple of assets. So it's great. It's really gone fine. But they're asking, you know, I don't understand what to do for homework. Well, you know, it says right there, practice tests, questions in the lab. It's right there. So it's telling me the student either didn't read their syllabus or can't be bothered to go back and look at their syllabus. That's inappropriate. That's like acting like a K through 12 student. You're not. You're an adult. You're in college. But let's have a quick note on that. In the United States, there is no such thing as grade 13, like an in-between college and high school. There's no such thing as that. You're in high school, then you go to college. When I teach at USF, there's no difference in how I approach my courses at USF than how I approach my courses at HCC. None. Because you're in college. Community colleges are designed to teach freshman, sophomore level. University can teach upper division and graduate school. That's the difference. Not 
quality of work, not rigor of work. And in fact, I've had plenty of students say, wow, community college is actually harder than university. Okay. So again, that student was acting not like an adult, not like a college student. Don't do that. If you've read through this again, like, oh, I don't remember the homework, let's go back look. And then you have a question. You're welcome to ask me, of course. Now, with your homework, practice tests, do them like I explained earlier in this video. Do the labs like they explain in the labs. And then the work itself is due on the day of the exam, noticed by effectively midnight, but 11.59 p.m. on the day of the exam. I'll show you when the exams are tomorrow. Now, like that other student, even one today asked me, well, I don't know if I want to use Word. You don't have to. Read. Seriously. This is giving you the suggestion of using Microsoft Word. If you want to write it out and send it to me that way, that's fine. I had a student this semester that typed all of their answers in an email and sent it to me. I do not care. I don't. As long as I get the homework, email to me at my HSC address when it's due. It's due on the same day as the exam. Now, like I said earlier, when I grade your homework, I'm grading on effort. As long as you've gave it the good college try, I will give you all the homework points. Because I know the answers are in your book. It's right here. When you get a question wrong because you graded it, go back and find out why it's wrong. You want to learn. You don't want to memorize. Yeah, there's always a certain amount of memorization, sure. But you want to learn, right? So that when you take the test, you can do well the exams. And as is common in college, no late work is accepted. If you hit midnight on the day of that test, so it's effectively the next day, I'm not accepting it. It's a zero. Unless something like this. That's it. This is the only reason I will accept late work. Same with exams, by the way. This is out of your control. Life is messy. So I understand that. But this is like, well, you know, I'll get around to it. I'll do it eventually. I'll turn it late. But, you know, eh, a few points off, no big deal. No, you're not approaching it like an adult. You're not approaching it like a college student. Heck, like when I was in college, you're not approaching it like an actual job where you're expected to do the work on time with a deadline. That's life, folks. You better get in the habit now. I don't play games. Don't try and play with me. Right. Lucky, lucky, lucky. You are in a Gordon class. Isn't that lovely? Now, a few things. If you're not familiar with Gordon Well, that means either A, you're new to college, or B, you're new to college in Florida. Either way, welcome. Here's what's happening. A gentleman by the name of Senator Gordon, long time ago, thought that college students were coming out woefully unprepared in mathematic and writing ability. No matter what you think, he was right. You will always be graded on how you write and how you talk. He was right about that. Now, with this, the college just has to discern how to do things. And, and like with mathematics, that's easy. They just say, well, all right, here's your degree. You go to this mathematics, college algebra, pre-cal, cal one, cal two, whatever it is. But for the writing, that was challenging. And really they only had two choices. Have you take like English three, which actually I would have preferred because plenty of people need a job. More formalized work is better. And then, which means you're being taught it by an actual English professor. And then for me, it's a really bad position. I am not an English professor. I'm a geobiologist. So what exactly am I going to teach you? The last English class I took was in 1993. How am I a professional to teach you that? Now, this was state law. I have no choice. So here we are. Because what they chose to do then, because they didn't choose the take English 3, is something called writing across the curriculum. It's a good idea. And that what they want you to do is get like a smattering of different writing styles in all these different fields. Here's the problem. I'm not an English professor. So to make me into one is really not fair to you, nor is it fair to me. But here's another problem. What am I going to teach you? You might say, well, you know, there's APA and MLA. We'll do that. But that doesn't always work. In science, for example, if I'm going to write something for a journal, I want to publish the work. Once I've done my research, I collected my data, I analyzed my data, say, yeah, this is worthy of publishing. At least I think it is. What my next job is, is to go to the journal I want to try to publish in. Go into that journal, go to the instructions to author, and read. Here's what I need to do to format my paper to their liking. It is not this. It's not say, well, I'll do it APA, it'll be good. No, I have to read. Every journal is different, it seems like. There's 100 journals in the sciences that I might be attached to through geology and biology uh, and, and astronomy, whatever I'm working like astrobiology. I have to decide who I'm going to go for. And then I restructure everything to put into their liking and then publish it, hopefully. So what exactly am I gonna teach you? Which format should I go for? Don't know. So it's a really tough position for us all. Now, if I remember correctly, in 2006, 
Senator Gordon unfortunately passed away. And when he did so, people had this idea that, yeah, there's no more Gordon rule. Mm -mm. It was state law. Now, as it happened, for some reason, there was no word count in the natural sciences. But the department came back and said, hey, we would like you guys to do something a little bit substantial. So there's really only two things I could have done. Essay exams, which some students love, some do not, or this. What I want you to do between now and the turn-in date, you can see right there, 10th of November, I would like for you to find a paper that relates to the course, nutrition or drugs. That should be easy. So let's go to Google. Let's take a look. And this is something like, um, I don't know, came to mind because I had one earlier today. Are eggs good for you? Okay. How many times have you heard this? One day they're good for you. The next day they're bad for you. Oh my goodness gracious. Well, we're working on this. Science is not an easy endeavor. And so go to newspaper articles. There you go. Let's go find out. Okay. So yeah, here's one men's health. Mm, fine. Egg whites can be just as good as whole eggs for muscle. Yeah, fine. People can say, well, no, yolk's terrible for you. Just eat the white. We're actually finding out that may not be true. Okay. This is a huge one for my wife. My wife is Chinese. So noodles are slightly part of their culture. So we eat a lot of them. Today, she was all grumpy about some udon noodles I was eating. Okay. So yeah, are they good for you? This is the kind of person who should be answering that. I'm not a dietitian. I'm qualified to teach this class, but I'm not a dietitian. So, and that actually comes up in the book, which is great. So let's hear what somebody professional has to say. And even medical doctors, a lot of them don't touch diet because it's really hard to do diet. So I know plenty of doctors that, yeah, no, no, no. We'll send you out to a professional, a specialist. Great. So there's an article for you. Healthline, not bad. Uh, how to tell if eggs are good. The flow test. Okay. A little bit different idea, but why not? Ooh, organic food. That's always a fun one to talk about. Eight shocking truths about your fresh produce. Nice. Now, hopefully there's eggs in there somewhere because that's what we're talking about. There you go, organic eggs and so forth. So you just have to find a paper too. Now, how long did it take me to start pulling out papers? There were 41 million results in 0.39 seconds. All right, that's pretty darn efficient. So in that case, let's go back to this. So here's what I want you to do. Between now and the turn-in date, find an article that relates to the course. It took me... 0.39 seconds to find 40 million papers, well, articles, kind of ideas, little results coming back. And you can use newspaper, magazines, journals, that kind of idea. It just has to be published of some kinds. No video I watched or I had a discussion with somebody, an anecdote, and here's what they said. No, 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 fine. And here's what I'd like you to do with the paper. Give me a summary. That might seem a bit silly, a summary. It's not. For a lot of scientists, the hardest part of a paper to write is the abstract. An abstract is a summary. It's, it's not easy to take all that science and crush it down into a paragraph or two. You are working on that skill. That's why I put it there. And then compare and contrast the articles. Uh, I, I, two articles, if I said plural. Compare and contrast them. How are they similar? How are they different? And then I want your thoughts. That does not mean say something like, yeah, I thought it was a bunch of hooey. And leave it at that. No, 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 no. By the time this is due, you're almost done with the class. You have like about two and a half weeks left by this point. So at that point, you should be able to say something intelligent, articulate on the subject. Here's why I agree with it. Here's why I don't. Back up your opinion. Now, when you do this, the college asks it to be a, an actual paper. So this is set pretty much by the college, a standard college level paper. Give me a literature cited. I don't care what formatting you use. And then because students have said, well, it's not specific enough for syllabus. They did that you know, a while ago. This is pretty specific. Fine, you want a specific, here you go. Must be typed, double spaced, times new Roman, one inch margins, there you go. That's pretty darn specific. And then email it to me at my HC address by 11.59 p.m. like everything else on the day it's due. Now, one criticism I got from students was, I don't think it's fair, you should give me the topic. What? You're not in fifth grade anymore, you're in college. You should not have to have a professor give you a subject. You can figure it out. And another good bother than me not giving you a subject is I want you to pick something you actually have interest in. So I'm not going to give you a subject. Find something that you want to talk about that relates to the class. Now, I gave you areas. There's a lot of ways this relates. Subject matter, astrobiology, bacteriology, biochemistry, biophysics, biotech, botany, including astrobotany. Great field, by the way. Cell bio, ecology, evolution bio, genetics, histology, invert zoo, medical science, nutrition, general zoo, mycology, phycology, physiology, vertebrate zoo, and virology. There's a lot of things that might relate to the class. Tickle your own fancy. And then notice what I said here. You must be a .edu, .gov, or mainstream media. No 
I saw on the telly or I watched a video or I talked to a dietitian and here's what they said. No, because I can't vet any of that. Something formally published. Now, I give a bit of heads up here. A dot .edu, a dot .gov, that's considered pretty darn good. Mainstream media? I had a student, uh, whew, was that Thursday maybe, last week? I said something about news sources. And I said, well, yeah, but based on the news that's going on, and the student kind of chimed in and said, that's not a good source, talking about news sources. Okay, so the student was telling me they don't like news sources. They have, a, they have their own bias against news sources. Fine, my reply to the student was simply, well, I agree. News sources have biasy. And I reminded the student, yeah, and that's in your syllabus too, by the way. So I actually, she didn't have to say that. I don't know why she chimed in on that, trying to say that what I was suggesting was wrong because I actually had said it in their syllabus. News sources have biasy. Sure they do. And like it says right here, be aware of those biasy. Now in the comment the student was making, I wasn't articulating any news source. Like CNN said this or Fox News said that. I just said something about well, general news sources. So I don't quite get why the student was grumpy about that because they were effectively saying exactly what I had said in the syllabus. Be aware of this. When you read something that's a tertiary level particularly, there's gonna be bias. For example, CNN tends to lean left, although I see some right-leaning stuff on CNN. Fox News tends to lean right, but I see some left-leaning material on Fox News. Great. Be aware of bias. Try to find something that's unbiased. Absolutely agree with that. And the .edu's and .gov's, us.gov, for example, tend to be better that way. In biology, it's lovely to find things that are younger than two years because things get outdated pretty fast. Now, there are times when older than two years is fine. When I was doing research in my undergrad, not grad, excuse me, in my graduate school, I think it was, I remember asking a particular question of my major advisor. Um, yeah, it was like my, my master's program. I wanted to know well, how far back in the literature should I go? And, and the, the reply was, you should go as back as far as you can. What does that mean? If you can go back 100 years, 200 years, you do it. That's obviously a little more than two. 100 years, really? 200 years, really? But the idea was solid and that she was saying, yeah, because you don't know how things have changed over time. And if you get a site from a site, from a site, meaning somebody quoted somebody who quoted somebody, meaning can be lost along the way. It's like the whole like telephone game people play, like you say somebody to somebody, and by the time the word gets to like 10th person, it means something else. Yeah, you gotta be careful with that. So there are times to go back a long ways, but in this case, for Gordon rule, nah, it should be two years or younger. And if it's something older than two years, you can always ask me about it. Like there was a, a student a semester two ago, had a book they wanted to read. Fine, I mean, a book's a lot more than I'm asking for. I was only asking for two articles. It takes like five minutes to read an article. She wanted to read a whole book. She, yeah, great, no worries. But the book was like five or 10 years old. I think it was 10 years old. And I said, well, this be okay. So you know, I, I looked on the book and she gave me the title. I looked it up and yeah, it's fine, no worries. Great book and she seemed to really enjoy it. So yeah, just let me know, there's something out there. Like I said, no anecdotes, no interviews, no movies, except for no, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. And don't turn in late. Right there is a turn in date. You know exactly when it's due. There's no excuse to be late outside of some very extenuating circumstances. And of course, if something like this happens, I'll definitely work with you. But remember this, if you have anything like this, remember, it's got to be documentable, as it says in your syllabus. You can't just say, oh, yeah, you know, I was in the hospital. I'm very sorry to hear that, but you still got to document it. You know, scan something and email it to me, that kind of idea. All right, your examinations. So as it notes here, there's four exams in the course and they'll be given through Canvas. So let's go back to Canvas for a second. Like I said, there's a quiz tab. It's not something you can see now, but when I get towards exams, you'll see it in your page. On the day of that test, you'll click on the quiz, you'll take your test, you're done. Now, it'll be given through Canvas. Canvas is very specific. In order to do a test through Canvas, you must use a formal desktop or laptop. You cannot use and a slate like an iPad or your phone, nothing like that will work. As you use a formal desktop or laptop, it must be through Google Chrome. That comes right from tech support through Canvas. They're like, yeah, it has to be this, nothing else. Okay, make sure everything's up to date. And of course you cannot cheat. If, I, if you get caught for cheating, you're gonna get a zero, obviously. So in that case, technical issues crop up. Now let's go back here a second. Now just right there, you have this little help icon. Click on it. This is Canvas tech support. Click on it. I cannot help you. So you can't be 10 minutes of your test, something going wrong. Send me a quick email. Mr. Jacobson, I don't know what's happening. First off, I don't know when you're taking your test. And I'm gonna come back to that in a moment. So I may not even be online when you're taking the test. I can't be there for effectively 24 hours straight. 
wondering when someone's taking a test just in case. I've got five of the classes, hundreds of students, plus a family. I can't do that. No one would expect someone to do that. And then on top of that, like I said earlier, I am not a tech support person. I have no administrative privileges to go on a computer and figure out your tech problems. They'll help you. And they're lovely. I've spoken to them many times. They're lovely. I've even talked to them like at two in the morning on a Saturday. And it was kind of cute when I've done that. It's like they ping back. It might take like five or 10 minutes for somebody to answer because they don't expect it. And then people come back and say, oh my gosh, there's somebody here that's so exciting. Yeah, yeah, nice. Let's have a good discussion. And it's great. They're great discussions. These people are lovely. I've never had a bad conversation with somebody on, on the Canvas tech support. They're just lovely, lovely people. And they can hopefully help you with what's going on. So use that help icon. Now, one of the things I've gotten before is, well, yeah, during the middle of my test, my power went out. And so I couldn't take the exam. Guess what? It can be checked. And I have caught students cheating by taking this kind of route. Don't cheat. You cheat, you get a zero from the exam. And I have every right to fail you in the course for cheating. Don't cheat. My recommendation is do just do your best you can. Take the honorable grade, even if that means an honorable F. Take the test legitimately. Then sit down and work with me. Make that team's appointment. Let's go over the, qu the test question by question and try to get you ready for the next exam. Be an adult and I will work with you. Now, as notes here, all exams will be taken during the dates given in the tentative schedule of this class syllabus. Please see below, great. So when you take the test, you will get one hour and 40 minutes to take the exam. That's the exact same time that we're giving students in the traditional classes of the DLive C. So you get the same thing. Now you're welcome to take the test when you like. It'll be open from 9 a.m. to 11.59 p.m. And once you start the test, you get the hour and 40 minutes. And I made a little note here. Maybe you're a, somebody who likes being awake later in the day, okay. Do you know I started test later than 10, 19 p.m. because you won't get an hour and 40 minutes. Once it hits 11.59 p.m., the test closes. Don't do that to yourself. Make sure you're giving yourself at least an hour and 40 minutes to take the test. But you can take it any time of the day. Now, why you get to do that is because there's no formal time for this class. That is unlike traditional, unlike D Live C. So I can't say take it from 9 a.m. to 10.40. I can't do that to you because I don't know what your schedule is. I'm not going to do that to you. So that's a bit of a luxury that you can take at any time that day, but you still only get the hour and 40 minutes. And bear in mind, I'm not permitted to extend test time ever outside of a disabilities note. So if you have one of those, you gotta go talk to the HTC disability office. They will figure out everything that needs to be done. They will send me paperwork. Then I'm allowed to do something for you. I cannot help you until I get that. It's college policy, sorry. So like I said, there's no time to go over things. There's too much to do, too much to lecture on. No time in classes. Again, I'm trying to get you into that mind frame. It's a real class. So please, please, please make that T's appointment if you want to go over the exam. And remember, if you miss the test, you miss the test. I do not give makeup exams outside of very extenuating circumstances. So grading. Now, this is a point system that's weighted. And so you see exactly how much everything is worth. Exam one, two, three, and four, how much they're worth. The Gordon rule, how much is worth how much your homeworks are worth. I mentioned homework is mainly two things, third if you want it. The two things are the assessments at the end of the chapter and your labs. The third thing, if you want to include it that way is your Gordon rule, but I made it its own separate grade. That's a gift to you actually. You can't get the Gordon rule wrong as long as you do what I have in the syllabus and then you're good to go. And so you can see how it all breaks down and then 100%. Now, I'm giving you an example here of how a point system works, this weighted point system. This is a fake student in a fake class. It's just an example to show you how your tests and therefore your grades are going to work. So notice in this fake student, in this fake class, the grades they got. Notice exam one, they got 63 points out of 70 points. They got a 90%, great job. Exam two, how they did. Exam three, how they did. The homeworks, how they did. The Gordon rule, how they did. Great, now you can see the points they got, the percentage they got, and how much percent of the grade that is. So here's how it worked. Notice test one, they got a 90%. So it's the 90 weighted system. And you can see how many points that equates into 13.5 points. So exam two, 85.7 is worth 15%, 12.9 points in the, in the overall grade. After everything's done, I just add up the points and there you go. 
this fake student of fake class got an 89.5. Now, I purposely gave this fake student of fake class as great to highlight the fact that being a scientist, I happen to like mathematics. So for my class, I round up whenever I'm legitimately allowed to do so. And as you know, in mathematics, if it's 0.5 or higher, I can round up. So that's what I did. So the student got a fake 89.5. I rounded it to a fake A. Great fake job. Nice job. And you can see then what the overall grades are. If I am allowed to round up, I will do so. I will give you every competitive advantage I possibly and legally am allowed to do. And remember, if you cheat, you will fail. It is my, my prerogative because I want you to be legitimately learning the material and playing in a fair game with your colleagues. Now, attendance is mandatory, that's true. And that's really meaning you have to do the work. There was one time attendance really is mandatory here. Within the first week of this course, you've got to tell me that you are in the class and want to stay in the class. I'll come back to that. Actually, let me do it now. Let me come back to that at the end. It's a kind of a separate announcement I'm going to put up, but let me come back to that now. So um, when I was talking about like office hours and, and uh, you know, asking questions, emails, that sort of idea, there's one email message you have to send to me. We have this thing in the college called a WN grade. And that WN grade would draw on attendance means like you never attended class, which means I have to know you're about. You can't just be nowhere and then suddenly show up one day and at the very last day of the class, say, oh, yeah, yeah, I need to go take those tests. So please, within the first week, send me an email to let me know, hey, I'm in the course and I want to stay in the course. Please don't withdraw me from the class for this like withdrawal on attendance kind of idea. Where were we? So hang on, I got another oh, we go. on. So don't do that to yourself. You know, make sure that you are communicating with me and that you're approaching the class appropriately. Okay, now you're not recording anything, I guess, because you know there's no classes to come to. But this was asked to be put into the syllabus, and there are rules in the state on what you can and cannot record. Fine, it's state law. I've got no problem with it. And really, why this? And really, the only way this helps us in this class is private conversation. So we're doing like a Teams appointment. As far as I understand, you're not allowed to record that. I'm not recording it. So again, follow the state law, and I'll do the same thing. Extra credit, like I said, you'll find on your exams. It is not appropriate to ask for extra credit because I can't give it to you. It's not fair that you get extra, extra credit and your colleagues don't. It's not fair to them. So it'll be the same for everybody and you're gonna see it on your exams. Announcements, like I said, I am a communicative professor. So in that case, watch those announcements. You should be checking these announcements every single day, including weekends. I had a student in the spring, two semesters ago now, who got really grumpy with me at one point. She goes, well, this is a Tuesday, Thursday class. I shouldn't have to look at emails on, on any other day, including weekends. What? That is a very much like a high school mentality. You know, I, I don't, I, I come to class on this day outside of that. I don't, I shouldn't have anything to do with the class. No, as you know, life is messy. Things happen all the time. And because of that, maybe something's happening on a weekend. I've got to communicate to you or the class. Check regularly. I am a communicative professor and you should reply back if you need to. Now, some important notes for you. My specific background is, is biology, which is really ecology and zoology and geology. I am not now, nor will I ever be a medical doctor. That being said, I teach medical classes regularly. That's fine in itself, it's no big deal. I'm qualified to teach all the classes I teach. The only one I'm really not qualified to teach at HCC or anywhere actually is microbiology. It's a very specialized class. That's, that's okay, plenty of people who can teach that but I'm not, a, I'm not a medical doctor. Don't make me out to be one. If you have a medical question, I recommend you find a board certified medical doctor and then ask them that question. If you're absent, not just from class, I'm meaning this from like you know, a period of time, you don't know what's going on. Um, you're behind a month in work, maybe an exam got missed. Go into your syllabus, go in your notes, find out what's going on and ask me. You know, just read first and then ask me questions. Like I said a moment ago, if you have a disability, you can send me an email saying, you know, I need four hours for a test. Okay. By law, again, you have to talk to the disabilities office. I've given you all their contact information here. They will decide what you get. Then they will send out paperwork and I'll do whatever they say. But you have to talk to them first. I don't mind again what it says. I don't mind doing whatever needs to be done. You have to talk to them first. Now, these next two are a little bit scary, but they're good. Not only to be reminded of this, but it's good the college is doing this for you. The first one is that HAC connects to a company called Baycare. 
and this is for mental health services. Now, this is really very serious on that. Generally speaking, in a country like the United States, it's now considered a mark of health when you see or speak to somebody when you're having an issue. Really, it's, it's falling by the wayside now, and thankfully so, the stigma that goes with, well, I needed to talk to a counselor. That's thankfully falling away because most people at some point in their life need to talk to somebody. It's a really tough world we live in. And I have been reading since the COVID issue really began to get serious spring of 2020, almost two years out from that, mental health issues in the United States skyrocketed by 800%. And by the way, we're nowhere near out of this COVID issue. I keep seeing like commercials, well, if the end is in sight, rubbish. There's nothing in the science is saying that's true. In fact, in some ways it's, it's, it's still really, really serious. It might get worse if we don't attend to this. And so I've been reading a modern current article saying that mental health issues are still skyrocketing. Right. And remember, in the United States, it is now considered a mark of health to go and talk to somebody when you need to. And here's one we can do it with professionals for free. That is amazing. Free, confidential, professional services. They'll talk about whatever you want. School, money, work, relationships. Let them know what you need to talk about. If you do this outside of a college, even with insurance, it can be massively expensive. A friend of mine, um, she went to like a, a health place. It was like a retreat to go to. It wasn't um, like a, a mental hospital. It was nothing like that. It was like a retreat that she went to. And then she was there for two weeks. And when she was there at this like retreat, she was getting help for addiction to pills. And she was saying, yeah, I mean, it was great what she went through. It, it effectively saved her life. But she's saying, wow, yeah, at the end of the two weeks, she has spent approximately... 130,000 US dollars. Oh my. I'm a teacher. I'm roughly $130,000 away from being able to afford that. What am I going to do? And I'm so happy she went. And she's, she's delightful. She's up getting on her feet. She's, she's getting back into routine. She's, she's doing so much better. But it was massively expensive. This is free, folks. So use it. Don't feel ashamed to need to talk to somebody. And they can connect this idea with this one. Speak up HSC. It's meant to keep you and people at the college safe. So you, your colleagues, faculty, staff, administration, everybody safe. And this would be if you hear somebody threatening themselves, you, the college, this is a way that you can say, hey, this person might be dangerous to themselves or someone else. It's meant to help them while keeping everybody safe. This is not meant to get anybody in trouble. Don't ever do something stupid like, I don't like them. I'm going to get them in trouble. Don't do that because you're going to get in trouble. This is meant to help everybody. And it does. I saw it once in great example. One of the students in my class, he was threatening the college. It wasn't threatening me. It was threatening the college. I didn't know it at the time. There was no reason for me to know at the time. But I found out later because a student came back and he explained what was happening. That he had schizophrenia. And he had not been taking his medicine. And it just wasn't going well for him. And he ended up threatening the college. Okay. So the college got him help. He got the help he needed. He was gone for like a semester or two, but he got the help he needed. He came back, continued on his way. That's what it's for. Not to get anybody in trouble, not to hurt anybody ever, to help everybody, to keep people safe and to help everybody. Use it. Use it appropriately, but use it if you need to. And then the equity statement. My class, everybody's class, the college generally, every campus, it should be a comfortable, welcoming environment. If something has happened, let us know, please. Now remember, I've done a lot to put the syllabus together. It's 13 pages, but they're not meant to be all inclusive. If there's questions or something happens, talk to me. We will work something out. It, it, it's more of like, I forgot to say something, or I forgot to put something in, or something isn't right, you know, whatever, just tell us. And if something is serious, we will deal with it. Of course, we'll deal with it. All right, so your tenure schedule. Things could change. I've noticed some reason why. It's, you know, pandemics, fires, storms, you know, hurricanes, whew, tornadoes, terrorist threats, emergencies. A lot of things can cause a tentative schedule to be needed. Now, notice what I've done in the tentative schedule. There's not much to list because this course is really on your schedule. I'm more of like a, a referee. You know, okay, here's what you need to do. Go. Up, oh, up, oh, foul. A little problem with the play. You missed a test. What's going on? That kind of idea. That's my job. 
This is your directed. It's really at your timing. Technically speaking, the only thing that's like time gated here are the exams. You know, there's no reason why you should finish the class in like two days. So it's all on your own, pretty much. You can ask me questions, absolutely. But really the study and everything, it's, it's you. That's what you're signing up for. Fully online course, no live lectures. And so what I'm doing is trying to guide you a bit. Tomorrow is when the course starts. You know, so. so scientific method, that's the first lab. And I put on the 15th. You don't have to do it on the 15th. You just got to get it done by the day of the first test. Like it says in your syllabus, and I mentioned earlier. And here's the first exam right there. I just suggested, you know, let's get it out of the way. I suggested it. You could do whatever you like. It's right there online for you. You can do whatever you like. Lab two, you can do whatever you like. I don't care as long as you get it done by the 4th of October. It was just, I can take away the highlight. It was just a suggestion. And then your exam. Now your exam, here's what it's on. The chapters of basic nutrition, evaluating nutritional information, planning nutritious diets, body basics, and then lab one and two. You can see when you're taking it. Remember the exams are open from 9 a.m. to 11.59 p.m. I don't care when that you take it. When you start it, you get the hour and 40 minutes, but that's when it's open. And don't forget your homework is due by 11.59 on the same day. So homework one, which will be on the quizzes, on the basic nutrition, <clears throat> evaluating nutrition information, planning nutritious diets, body basics, the quizzes in all those chapters, plus your labs is due by 11.59 on the 4th of October. Exam two, same idea. You can see when it is. Exam three, same idea. You can see where it is. And by the way, don't forget your Gordon rule. And then the final. The final is set by the college. Now, the timing is still the same, but the day is set by the college. So you can see the lab and then what it's on. Nutrition for physical, physically active lifestyles, nutrition for a lifetime and drugs, tobacco, and alcohol, as well as lab number five. And it'll be on Wednesday, December 1st. Of course, you get the hour and 40 minutes, so by 11.59 p.m. And there you go. That's the course in a nutshell, except for that last, very last part I noted to you, which is the frequently asked questions and comments. These are the questions I get over and over and over and over again. And I'm trying to save you and myself a little bit of time. So just read through this, read the syllabus carefully and thoroughly, even though I just went over the syllabus with you. Then read through this. And then if you still have a question, let me know. Right, so that's the syllabus in a nutshell. Yeah, let's go ahead and close that. That's also in your file. So click there on the link. There it is in syllabus. Again, all your lectures and all your labs. So this is the course in a nutshell. Don't forget, check those announcements regularly. So right now you have a first announcement up there. I showed it to you earlier in this video. I will keep it up there. But I plan to have a second announcement for you, probably midweek of this week to remind you, hey, please send me an email at some point within you know, the next few days to let me know you want to stay in the class so I don't have to W in you, withdraw on attendance. It's the only time I really took attendance on the course. So again, start here, read through this. I've given you the, this is what you need to do in the course. And then of course, never be shy asking questions. I, I don't remember ever criticizing a student for a question. I don't remember ever doing it. I, I just don't, even in classes, people say all the time, well, this is probably a stupid question or whatever. Hey, don't worry about that. Just, I don't believe in that. If it's a legitimate question it relates to the material, ask the question. Even when it's really a parent question, like what do we do for homework? Well, it's right there in your syllabus. I don't criticize. So just ask. I will do everything I can to help you out. Right, so it's all here. Welcome to the course. I hope you enjoy it. I really do. There's a ton of science in here. I understand the science. I love it. I'm a raging nerd and I am proud of my nerdiness. Nothing wrong with being a nerd, but it is still science. And I get it if it's not a cup of tea for you. I understand that, but it's so important. I would never underestimate the power of diet. And if really, if I had to pick that one thing outside of like regular pattern sleep, but that one thing in your daily life that's the most critical thing, it's health. And what's really that one thing that most impacts health it's really diet. I mean, yes, you could talk about drinking and smoking, which has zero basis in ever being okay for you. It's really diet. So this course can have a lot of positive application to your life. On top of the fact, I really hope you enjoy it. But as I'm noting out here, let me know if you have questions. And it is very nice to meet you all. Absolutely. So please talk to me. Let me know what's going on. And welcome to the class. Right. So I'm going to stop here.
Again, I know it's a little long. I'm sorry about that. It's been like an hour. We've been talking at least, so yeah, about an hour. So again, if you have any questions, feel free beyond that. Let's enjoy the term. Nice to meet everybody, and I'll hopefully talk to you soon. Bye, everybody.